Hi everyone, my name is Beth. I'm a librarian at the Weinberg Library in Mequon, and I'm here today to talk to you about BadgerLink, which is a website that you have access to through the Weinberg Library, thanks to the Department of Public Instruction. Um, you can get to it from home or here in the library, and it contains links to a bunch of different websites that can help you with research, um, including genealogical research, um, educational research if you are a student, and even some websites that delve into things like car repair, medical help, medical information, that sort of thing. To get to BadgerLink, you want to start off at our website, the Weinberg Library website, flwlib.org. From the home page, you'll mouse over eServices at the top of the screen. And then under Digital Services on the left, you'll click on BadgerLink. That will take you to this page where there's a description of the database and then you'll click on Access BadgerLink to get to BadgerLink officially. Now once I dive in here, I'm going to use the word database a lot, so I should stop and explain exactly what that means. A database is any collection of resources put together by a company or by an organization that you can access through different means. So the library, for example, subscribes to various databases and the Department of Public Instruction has built BadgerLink as an umbrella to take you out to many different databases provided by different companies and different organizations. So BadgerLink is where you start off and then you jump out to other places that will provide you with more specific and specialized information. So to get, navigate the list of databases that are available in BadgerLink, you have a couple different options. From here on the home page, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see this Get Started section. And this allows you to browse the various resources available through BadgerLink. One way to browse is by format. So if I click on All Formats, I can see there are a number of different options here. Primary sources would be things like newspapers, um, collections of writings from various times in history. There are some databases in the BadgerLink system that include books that you can access for free, encyclopedias like Encyclopedia Britannica, magazines, multimedia, which refers to things like um, writings as well as recordings, um, so audio interviews, for example newspapers, and then scholarly journals. So if you are a college student, um, a med student, or you're just writing an article or doing research, um, the scholarly journal databases might be useful for you. So if you click on any of these, you'll be taken to a list of just the databases within BadgerLink that cover one of these particular formats. You can also browse by subject. There are a number of different subjects, like I mentioned, including genealogy, um, government information, mathematics, social studies, the visual and performing arts, and even specific Wisconsin databases that are useful for learning about the history of our state as well as what's happening in our state today. You can also browse by audience. A lot of students in our state actually use BadgerLink at school for research, um, to write research papers, to do projects. So if you are a parent who's tutoring a student at home right now or homeschooling a student during the pandemic, you can access all of those databases from home and you can narrow down which ones are intended for your student's particular age group by just clicking on them here. So you could see the elementary school databases versus middle school versus high school and even up into college. Um, there are databases intended for teachers as well. Um, so if you're a teacher, you can take advantage of that. But if you are a stand-in teacher for the moment while your student can't go to school, you can also click on educator here and see what teachers have access to um, in terms of curriculum and also learning opportunities. And then of course there are databases intended for the general public. If you're a genealogist, again if you're a researcher, um, if you just want to learn how to fix your car <laughs> or learn more about a particular medication you've been prescribed or a medical issue you're experiencing, um, you can choose general public to see some of those options. And then finally, there are uh, databases entirely written in Spanish. So if you are not as fluent in English as you might like to be, and you are more confident in Spanish, you can access some of the databases in Spanish as well. And finally, another option you have is just to browse all of the resources. So if you click on all resources here, you'll be taken to an alphabetical list of every single database that BadgerLink links out to. And I'm going to do that right now. Once I click on Browse Resources, I get taken to this Browse Resources screen. And you'll notice right up here at the top, I still have the option to sort by format, subject, and or audience. 
And in fact, now I can sort by any and all of these options. So I could say, for example, under format that I want to see primary sources about history for elementary school students, and I can say apply. And now the list has been narrowed down specifically just to these three options because these are the best fit for all three of these options. I've got the Archive of Wisconsin Newspapers, which I can see provides full text daily and weekly Wisconsin newspapers from 2005 to 90 days ago, plus newspapers from the 1800s and 1900s. I have Explora for elementary schools, which is an interface that links out to elementary school teaching resources. And I have newspapers.com library edition, which covers historical newspapers from the 1700s up to the 2000s and includes regional, state, and small local newspapers throughout the United States and internationally. I can read more about any of these resources by clicking on read more. And then I can click on the name of the resource to be taken to the page itself, where I could do more searches, delve in deeper, um, even download pages and pictures from these various websites. So that is one way to browse all resources and then narrow down by what I actually need. Another way to navigate this database is to just look through the list itself and see what might be relevant to my interests. Um, so if I click reset up here at the top, I get taken to a full alphabetical list of every single resource linked out to, through BadgerLink. And there are a lot of them. So it can be a little overwhelming. It, it really helps to narrow down what you're looking at by choosing the format, subject, and or audience. Um, but if you're just interested in seeing what all is here, this is one way to do it. So you can jump around alphabetically if you click on any of the letters near the top of the screen. So if I clicked on H, I could get taken down and I can see we have access to health source, both for consumers and for nurses and medical students. Um, we have access to Heritage Quest Online, which is a genealogy resource that links to census records through Ancestry, the History Reference Center, and then Humanities International Complete, which includes articles and information about literature, philosophy, the arts, and history. I can also genuinely just scroll through the entire list, and I can see we have access to Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, there's Consumer Health Complete, which talks about consumer-oriented health information. Um, and like it says, it covers mainstream and holistic medicine. We have access to the Consumer Reports magazine. Um, you do have access to Consumer Reports through the library as well, um, but if you want to read the magazine itself, you can get to it here. There are a bunch of different resources through a company called EBSCO, which is just a company that puts together databases of information, um, articles, details, data, databases in Spanish. They have business resources. You can see every single EBSCO resource. So there's a lot to choose from on BadgerLink. Um, and again, clicking out will take you to more about any of these databases and let you see what's in them. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these databases just to kind of see, show you what the um, experience is like. So let's click through to the Learning Express Library School Center, which says that it is a skill building resource for classroom and homework success. And if I read more, I can see who it's recommended for. And it's pretty much exclusively for elementary school, middle school, and high school students. The idea here is that it can help them improve their skills in these various areas and it can help them prepare for their high school entrance exams. If I wasn't totally sure if I wanted to click through, I could also see more information about it by clicking here. Um, this would take me to a screen where I can see more details and I can actually see an information sheet and I can see a little training video about the Learning Express library. I'm gonna go ahead now and click on the title of the database to get to it. So now I've been taken to this school center and from here I can choose a particular schooling level um, and see what resources are available. So if I click on middle school, for example, I have a bunch of different options. I've got mathematics skills improvement with tests and tutorials, English language arts skills, social studies skills, and even some high school entrance exams preparations. So this is all useful data. Again, if you're a parent at home with a child right now who can't be in school or is having a hard time with online schooling, uh, or virtual schooling, this could be a useful resource both for you and for them. Going back to the full list of resources, there's another site that I want to draw your attention to, and that is Novelist. So Novelist is a resource that we as librarians actually use a lot to help people find 
books that are of interest to them based on what they've read before. Um, so there's a novelist that covers all ages and a novelist that's specific to kids in grades K through 8. So if I go to the novelist for all ages, the site looks like this. On the left, I can see recommended reading list in different genres and for different age groups. In the middle of the screen here, there are suggestions for different age groups based on what the books are like, based on what's popular. And up near the top of the screen, perhaps most importantly, you can search within this database for a specific book, for a book that you can't remember the title of. Um, you can type in information about a particular book, you can type in the title, you can type in the author, and you can find out about the book itself and also about books like it. So let's say that you recently read Where the Crawdads. I'm going to type in the title here. It drops down and gives me some suggestions for what title I might be referring to, which it's correct, so I could just click on it here. Or I can click search and see what options I get. And yes, this, is the, this first option is the one that I want. So I could click on the title um, to see more about the book. I can also click on title read-alikes or author read-alikes, and Novelist will give me suggestions for books that I might like if I enjoyed this one. I'm going to go ahead and click on the title of the book so I can see more about it. So it tells me a bunch about it. It tells me the description, kind of the pace, the tone, um, the character and quality of the writing. I have some reviews. I have more about this book where I can see a summary and more information about its publication. So this is a useful way, for example, if you run a book club and you are considering reading Where the Crawdads Sing with your book club, but you don't know that much about it, you can find out more about it here. And of course, like I said, if you've read it, over here under read alikes you can see more books that might be like it. The tricky part now is that you would have to take these titles, go to our library catalog and look them up. Um, we don't link directly to the catalog from here, but this is a good way to get more ideas if you don't want to speak to a librarian because we're always happy to, to make recommendations. Um, but you can make your own recommendations if you go in here and see. So you could type in Let's No One Get Hurt in the library catalog, see if it's at the library or available to you, check it out and see if you like it. You can also go ahead and click on that book to see more about it. And again, we can see the genre, we can see how it's written, we can see reviews about it, details about it, um, a brief summary right up here at the top. And then at the bottom, you can even search for more like this by choosing particular subjects, particular locations, and searching to get a full list of books about southern states or set within southern states or books with complex characters or books that are character driven and are coming of age stories. So Novelist is a very interesting resource and it's super helpful um, both for book club research but also for finding the next great book that you're going to read. Heading back to the full list of resources, I'm going to click on all subjects and choose genealogy and then apply. Just to point out that there are a bunch of genealogy resources linked out here as well. There are newspaper resources where you can access um, historical newspapers and current news newspapers to research obituaries. I mentioned Heritage Quest Online before, that links out to the U.S. Census from various years. The History Reference Center, where you can research various locations and possibly access primary sources about where your family might have lived. And then the Wisconsin Historical Society Family History Records, which make available some ancestry records that are also available at the Historical Society in Madison. And last but not least, I want to look at a couple of different EBSCO records just to give you a sense of how they work. So, let's say you go to the doctor, you get prescribed a medication, and you're not really sure what it is, what it does, what some of the side effects are, and you want to learn more. The company EBSCO, which I talked about a little bit earlier, and that is a company that specializes in putting together databases, has created a database called the AHFS Consumer Medication Information Database. And it includes information about various drugs and is available in both English and Spanish. And if I click on Read More, I can see that it's published by the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. It includes books, it includes how-to information about medications, and it identifies medications that have the potential for adverse effects when used by older adults. So it can be really useful. Now if I click on the name of the database, I'll get taken to a search menu. I can search for specific journals. If I know the name of a journal, I can search for specific books. But more likely in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to search for the medication I'm interested in. So 
Let's see, I'm gonna search for sertraline, which is an antidepressant. And as I type that in, I get a bunch of different options that I could choose. So I could choose any of these options or I can just click search and I get a couple of options here. And I can see at a glance that this entry comes from the AHFS Consumer Medication Information from July 2020, so it's very new. And so does this one. If I click on either of these options, I can read more about this particular medication. So I can see warnings, I can see why it's prescribed, how it should be used, and all kinds of different details. I can also see it in Spanish, and I can ask that the article be read to me out loud. On the right here, I also have options to print this article, email it to myself, save it to my computer. So this database is a place where you can go to get more information, empower yourself to feel informed about medications you might be taking or might be considering taking in the future. All of the different EBSCO databases work the same way. When you click through, so if I click through to Business Source Premier, it takes you right away to a search bar, and then you would want to search for whatever it is you're interested in within that database. So this one is the Business Source Premier database. So you could search for information about a particular company, information about a particular workforce. There's all kinds of ways to go about searching within these databases, um, and that is generally how it works. EBSCO collects these inf this information from various resources and from various scholarly resources specifically, and then you can search for the information you need within each of these collections. So that is it. That is the whole BadgerLink spiel. Um, BadgerLink is available, like I said, within the library and outside the library. In fact, anywhere in the state of Wisconsin, you can access BadgerLink because it is a Wisconsin-wide resource. I would really encourage you to experiment. Um, go to BadgerLink, click around, see what all is in here. Even if you don't think it's relevant to you now, it might be relevant to you later. As always, there is a handout linked in the description for this video. Please feel free to take a look at it, and please feel free to get in touch with me if you have questions. Um, you can also come into the library, the building is open, and we can answer your questions at the desk, we can show you how to access BadgerLink, um, and we can talk to you a little bit more about some of the databases that are available there. Thank you very much, I hope that this was helpful. I will see you again in two weeks for a redux of the Cut the Cable class. See you then!